In this tutorial, I wanted to walk through the process of converting an existing Rhino model that's made up of solid surfaces and curves into a Revit model. You can see that this model is describing an assembly that includes a green roof, along with a facade that has some louvers and mullions and glass panes to it. We also have some rather complex solid objects as well. You can see that we have some Boolean solid undersides here, along with columns that are atypical. They kind of have this architectural tapering type of aesthetic to them. And if I cut a clipping plane through this, you can see that we do have this underside buildup um, on the green roof, indicating layers of foam and soil, along with this uh, kind of gutter or trench at the very end. And if I keep you know, cutting through this, you'll see that you know, we have some rather clean solid geometry work um, being, being attended to uh, that will come in to be useful when we convert things into the Revit side. But this model is not yet structured for Revit conversion. You see that we have it, it has its own unique layer structure. It has a uh, curves master layer along with these topographic curves as well as these grids. Um, we have this roof buildup that has the different layers for you know, the topsoil, fill, foam, um, and so on. And we also have this architectural layer that's kind of indicating things like you know, the glass and the um, you know wood mullions and, and things of that nature. So this exercise is really going to be about how I would go about taking a model like this that may have been modeled uh, for a particular project and now it needs to go into the Revit environment. Um, if I jump over into Revit for a minute you can see that I have a series of things already set up. I have a sheet that has some views, a 3D view, a site view, a series of details, as well as a section. And my goal here is to bring all of these objects in and have it populate the sheet. Um, there are a couple of other things that are kind of interesting here. You can see that I have materials assigned um, indicating things like grass and earth soil fill and concrete. If I go back into Revit, um, you'll see that if I go to manage, and materials that we have a matching set of materials that can receive those names. So you can see that there is a layer here for, if I scroll to it here, there's earth fill soil, um, there's the foam layer, there's a grass layer, and so on. So the, Re the Revit model has some of this pre-set up here that, that is mapping to these different materials. And one of the things that's interesting about Conveyor is that if I Go through this process of organizing the model properly things like materials will come across um, and when this gets imported it will fit with the sheet um, exactly so right now everything is individual solids i don't have anything set up for a conveyor yet so what i'm going to do first is run my conveyor setup I'll make this imperial you can see that it's going to populate the layer structure um, that i can use to send objects into revit from I'm going to dock my conveyor window here as well, so you can see that I've got my control bar. And now I need to go through this process of assigning things to different layers. So I'm going to start with some of the easier pieces first. Um, I'm going to start with the grids. So you can see I've got these grids here. I'm simply going to select these objects. I'm going to go into conveyor and I'm going to assign these to grids. And that's the only step I need to do there. You'll see that the, they turn red, indicating that they're part of the grids layer. I'm going to select this object as well. This is a surface that will indicate a floor slab. So I'm going to scroll down here and select floors. And I'm going to make this the generic 12 inch filled as such. I have a series of columns here. And what I'm going to do is go over into my yeah, I'm just going to actually select them in 3D view. That'll probably just be just as easy. Select those objects like so. And I'm going to assign those to structure. And right now I have this generic type here, this uh, W, I guess it's a W shape, uh, 12 by uh, 26. I'm going to create a new type. I'm going to call it generic column. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to create a new type here. And that's now going to be uh, the generic column. And, and Revit's going to understand that I want this to be on a kind of a column structure category when it comes in, even though it's uh, you know just a generic type there. But it'll have the appropriate classifications. 
So now that I have those assigned, that's kind of the easy bit. I have a, a series of objects now that can be brought in. Um, but now I want to organize some of these more uh, complex assemblies. So we have a series of glass panes and mullions and structure and louvers as well. And what I want to do is I'm going to convert this entire system into a block. And the reason I'm going to do that is that this will allow me to bring in that all of these objects as one family element. And the way that conveyor is going to work as well is it's going to create the family with the requisite materials assigned, um, including this, this wood material uh, and, and so on. So I'll have that kind of layer and visibility control. So I'm going to go into my side view here. And you can see that I've got this area that I want to select and turn into a block. I'm just going to select those objects there. And I'm just going to type in the word block. And it's going to ask me to put a base point. So I'm simply going to find a, a point that will suffice. I'm going to click this, this point here. And I'm going to call this facade block. And what I will expect to happen when I bring this into Revit is that this facade block will um, be created as a family called facade block. So I have that set up. And now that I have that set up, I need to assign my block instance. So after I create a block, this is actually a block instance. So I want to make sure that this is a components and I'm going to make this generic models. Um, I'm now going to do the same for this roof buildup. So as I showed you before, if I slice through here, we have multiple layers defining the roof. And I want these roof layers to also be a block. I'm going to pull back here a little bit, and I'm going to go back to my right view. And before I make a block, I'm going to turn off my curves. I don't want my curves in there right now. I'm just going to select these objects. So since I have five poly surfaces and one extrusion, that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to make a block here. And it's going to ask me to define my block base point. I'm just going to pick this point here at the corner, and I'm going to call this roof block. So now I have that defined uh, as a block. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn my topography back on. There we go. So, um, and before I move on here, I need to also make sure that I've assigned this roof layer to a block instance. So I've selected my, my block here, and I want to make sure that this is going to be assigned to a components. And I'm going to make this the site category. So it's going to come in as a different category uh, of element than the facade. And so I think this is basically all I need um, now that I have these objects in. I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to jump back over into Revit. I'm going to find the Proving Ground tab and do the Rhino conveyor. And I'm going to navigate to my file. So I'm going to find my green roof file that I just created. And it's going to load in my objects. It's going to list out the, uh, the individual components here. So you have the floor, have the structure, things like that. I'm not seeing the grids, although I have grids already in my model. Let me just go back and double check this. So we have this on the grids layer as well. That is correct. Ah, the grids do not have a name yet. So what I need to do is uh, the grid requires that we assign a name. So I'm just gonna go through and um, enter in uh, names for each of these grid lines. Sometimes it's important to remember these, these steps. A, B, C, D. This will be E and F. So we have A, B, C, D, E. There we go. And then I want to make this grid one and this grid two. So now I've got my grids properly named. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And what we might see is that conveyor is going to indicate that, hey, those grids are already up to date because I've already brought them in, but I wanted to make sure they were listed here. Um, these were brought in through a previous import, but I want to make sure that they were listed uh, properly uh, in, in this element table. Um, but we have our floor, we have our generic columns, and so on. So what I'm going to do is simply load by Rhino objects. I'll go ahead and there's 15 elements total. Easy peasy. 
but I'm about to load two block instances, so it's going to give me this message that, hey, you should load in your block instances first. I'm going to hit OK. So we have our facade block and our roof block. I'm going to go ahead and load those in. Now, um, the facade block will take a little bit longer. There are a more significant number of elements in that particular block that uh, require us to be processed. And so what Conveyor is doing is it's reaching into the model and it's going to be preparing a series of temporary files uh, for us uh, to be used during this import process. And if I go back into my Rhino file while that's happening, we can kind of get a sense of how many elements we have here. I might just double click in and select those objects. You see that we have uh, 150 poly surfaces and 36 extrusions. So it's it's creating a series of temporary files that will be imported in. It, um, this will probably take just under a minute uh, to process. So if we go back over here, and you can see that it, it is exporting an SAT um, file. It's a temporary file. And one of the reasons why we're using um, SATs at this moment is that it turns out that Revit does a pretty good job of handling the SAT file format in that I can reach into an SAT from the Revit API and, and extract what's called a freeform element. And that's a uh, that's a native kind of solid object that Revit can use, um, and so SATs tend to be pretty advantageous for this. Um, so well, we're not we're not directly importing the SAT um, uh, in our in our approach, but it is bringing in. SATs as a kind of a temporary intermediary step, I guess, that the, the automation is handling. Um, <clears throat> and what the resultant geometry, as we'll see, um, is able to do is that it, we are able to assign things like materials to it um, and, and do other things uh, with it in the, the context of a family. So let me just jump back over into Revit here. And so it's going to be importing the facade first. So this may take again a few few seconds. This is a kind of more intensive operation and I am doing this in real time here so I'm not you know speeding up the video. I um, want to give you a sense, real time sense of what this feels like. Um, and now it's going to be doing the roof. So it's going through and it's going to be bringing in the block family for the roof. Um, every now and then you might get some kind of information like this. This is a warning. Sometimes a warning can be suppressed uh, through the API, other times it can't. In this case, it's saying that there's some, some part of this geometry that isn't quite perfect and, and Revit's not liking it. Um, when I inspected this earlier, it really didn't show what, what geometry it was and it seemed to work fine. Um, after the blocks have been processed, I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see that it is bringing in the columns, it's bringing in the roof, and it is cutting everything. Now, if I zoom in on this object, what I think is really compelling here is that we're immediately seeing the materials and the attributes that were assigned in Rhino. It was able to identify using the Rhino layer um, and material information that this was a concrete and this is a foam layer and these are soil fills and this is a sand material. And so by having it come through in this manner and having conveyor uh, be able to organize and leverage the Rhino information, you can see that we're getting um, drawings inside of Revit in the document, this, this sheet that are indicative of um, that material set out. So if I go to a 3D view here, so here's a 3D view of the import. You can see that it, it brought in that geometry. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the section box and just kind of do a live cut. And there's the cut. And you can see that it is, in fact, um, cutting with those materials assigned. Um, the one finishing piece here that I'd like to do is bring in the topography. You can see that inside of Rhino, I have these topographic lines on the, the roofscape here, indicating how that soil buildup is, is curving and kind of creating this kind of organic uh, buildup of, of soil. What I want to do now is uh, bring those curves in. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into Revit here. And instead of using this base conveyor tool, uh, what we are providing with conveyor is this geometry utility. And this is really meant for things like curves. Um, 
And if you're in the family environment, it'll do curves and uh, bring in reference points. And these are meant to be one-time imports of objects. But here you can see that we have uh, the entirety of the, the available layers. And I want to bring in this topography layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and import those in. And it's going to go through this process of converting the curves. And you can see that you might get some things like unjoining elements, you know, some warnings there. And it's bringing in those curves and, and rebuilding them. And what we have these set on are Rhino Geometry import line styles. Uh, but for some realism, what I'm going to do is convert those curves into a more appropriate line style. Hit those. Let's try that one more time. There we go, the lines. Yeah. And I'm going to associate these to the hidden line style. And now we get like a nice dashed line if I jump back down into my documentation set. Just click over there. There we go. Um, you can see that we have now these topographic lines appearing in the drawing. So after a single import, um, with very minimal um, post manipulation. Um, I did two steps. I imported the, the file all in a single pass that handled the application of the various materials. And I was then able to use the other utility that comes with Conveyor, this import geometry tool to bring in the curves. And so we now have a series of drawings that are starting to become indicative of what you might find on a, an architectural drawing set. I'm describing a series of design buildups. So hopefully this was an interesting exercise. It's um, really cool uh, for, for us to be able to see these workflows that can tie into these real world considerations. In this case, a consideration for transferring materials and other information that pertain most directly to the buildup of uh, information inside of a Revit file um, that can be used for the purposes of creating documentation and, and drawings.